Okay, everyone, uh, this is HD NES games, which some of you may have seen before. If you haven't, basically, there is a program that allows you to replace the NES graphics with PNGs. And I'll start with maybe the most impressive one, and then we'll check out various other ones. This was a, kind of a process to get some of this going, but I think it's worth it. And here's why. So remember, this is the original Metroid. However, it's in high definition. Actually, I kind of want to hear the intro music. It's one of my favorite video game songs of all time. This is the FDS version? What's that mean? This was made using legit analog sounds. Oh, uh, Famicom Disk System. Well, it's one or the other, no? Actual analog synthesizer cover. It's really, really good. It might be a little bit boring for me to start this segment just on music for a minute and a half, but I really want to hear the rest of it. with the compression and the reverb. <laughs> and this is what it looks like. Ooh, gotta get my buttons in order here. So you'll see that it's the um, Super Metroid sprite for Samus, but it's less frames because it's still using all the NES stuff. Like, basically everything that was um, programmed for the animations for the NES. It's just that, but different PNGs like overlaid on top of it. And this is done in Mason, M-E-S-E-N. And the, the music is optional. You know, you can do it or not. Um, also, unique to this is they give you a map which was sorely, sorely needed in the original Metroid. Someone said this looks like one of those NES games that starts throwing up blood and gives you a scary face. That's why this seems kind of off. It's the NES look, but with the SNES graphics. Yeah, I mean, again, your mileage may vary. Some people would probably love this, and some would be like, NO! I'm kind of in the middle. I think it's neat. Oh, I miss when those things, those, what are they called, gamers? Or geezers or something. I, they made like a honk noise when you shot them in the original. But uh, yeah, I think it's just a really cool piece of tech that works surprisingly well in certain circumstances. I, there's a couple more that are more faithful to the NES that I think you'll like. And again, it's different than like doing a ROM hack and overclocking the hardware, I think. I'm not really 100% sure how it works, but like I said, it's something to do with PNGs. And, um, sprite replacement just on top of the, the game that's already running. 
Also, the original Metroid is still a good game. I know it's like kind of scary for some people just because it's so incredibly, um, I guess obtuse and uh, there's a lot of dated, antiquated things about it, which I agree 100%. But this is one of those games that I lost many, many hours in. And as a kid, when video games were still, like, really simple, playing this when I was, like, five, and discovering all the secrets, every time I played the game, I discovered, like, new things. I found out there were two ice beams. That blew my mind. The wave beam, when I first discovered that, blew my mind, because it's not even necessary. Um, there's just something about getting lost in this game's world. that even though Super Metroid is in my top three favorite games of all time, there are still some things that, I mean, just experientially when I was a kid, having this game, I'll always be very grateful that I got to experience this at that time. And I never made my own maps for the record. I just kind of brute forced my way through the game. Experientially, that's a word. Yeah. It means what that you've experienced something. <laughs> oh, that looks cool. Oh, that that actually worked really well for me. I don't want to see what those um Oh yeah, here we go. One of these areas. That and like um those green areas. Kind of curious about those as well. I don't know if this is... Oh, look at that! There's even a hint. It's cracked slightly. I wonder if you could turn that off to get the, the authentic Metroid experience. That's maybe a little too obvious. You know what? It's good for people that maybe never played Metroid before to have some indication that, oh, there's a breakable block here, just to make the experience a little smoother. But, I don't know, there's a part of me that's very purist about those blocks being hidden. If I'm not mistaken, there's even one here. That's why the camera just panned up. The ice beam may be up here, if I'm not mistaken. The enemy is the hint. Oh, yeah. Vinny, is cracked walls and Zelda cheating? No, because it was designed that way. Hidden stuff is hidden difficulty and bad. Well, the enemy was the hint. But I agree, that's... I'm not gonna go... I'm not gonna go to war for the original Metroid, because there's a lot of very dated design things. But, I'm grateful I got to discover those things on my own before the internet, and when I was like a bappy. Because the sense of discovery was its own, like, unique thing. It, it's kind of hard to explain. Anyway, give me a couple minutes here. I'll, I'll move on to the next game. I just am kind of enjoying this. I don't think... Yeah, I don't have missiles yet, so I can't even get that. So this will be our dead end. I just wanted to see what that green zone looked like, but that's fine. The comment was a meme about David Jaffe and Dread. Oh, you're right, the review. That's right. Vinny, this appears to be the Metroid mother hack, and that's why you have the map and file select. There's even hints in the floor and walls. You played this in 8-bit mode before. Oh, okay, that explains a little bit. Um, okay. So, here's Ice Climber. So this one is a lot more just like NES enhanced as opposed to 16-bit style. And there's even like uh, a little bit of animation here that makes it look a little nicer. Now I've been pretty clear, I don't like this game. I, I never did. I still don't. Not a fan. <laughs> Uh, but I do like the visuals. I think this is a really nice way to update Ice Climber. And, you know, you're 
you collect an eggplant. Oh. <laughs> I just don't like the controls. I, like, it's so... NES games can be hit or miss with controls, but this one in particular, I think it's something about the jumping. It just doesn't... It just doesn't feel good. But I also didn't have this game as a kid, so... It's funny because I like Kid Icarus. And I still play Kid Icarus from time to time, but for some reason, Ice Climber is just a, not a fun experience for me. I know they're different things, generally, but some people would say that Kid Icarus is one of the more frustrating games on the NES. And, uh... It can be. But I think maybe I have rose-tinted nostalgia goggles for that one. Kid Icarus is way better, it's not even close. Well, I agree. <laughs> I actually agree with that, but... I think it's like almost apples to oranges, because it's much more of a simple arcade game, and that is a more ambitious, like, action-adventure game. Why brown ice? You know why. You gotta watch out where the huskies go, don't you eat that yellow snow. That kind of thing. Kung Fu. And then you have stuff that looks like this. Which kind of looks like a Flash game. Still plays exactly like Kung Fu. But, yeah. Anyway, I uh, just wanted to mention for any Full Sauce viewers that, weirdly enough, the previous thing I did was Plug and Plague, and I did a Plug and Play with NES reskins using, like, a different game engine. And so, if you weren't here for that, <laughs> it was kind of weird because there were some games from, like, 10 years ago or more that used the same NES engines but replaced them with, like, terrible graphics. And sold them for real money. But this is just fans who are making this stuff. But yeah, some of these things look better than other things, and I think... You know... That's up to you to decide. Is there a way to turn off half music volume in Mason? When you tab out? I'm sure there is. Audio, reduce volume, got it. I got it. Chat. You gotta set the overscan size to 32. Unfortunately, this one's not done, and is a little crusty. Oh, real quick. I wanna just, like, give a shout out to Strika. Or is it Strika? S-T-R-I-K-A for making a video about this stuff, which put this on my radar. Um, and thank you, Jackal, for reminding me. But yeah, um, is it Strika? It's S-T-R-I-K-A, that doesn't help. But uh, yeah, thank you. They did a very, very good video on this stuff, if you're interested in bonus materials. But yeah, I kind of... Oh, that was the name I inputted before. Uh, it's kind of broken. So, yeah, it's a little drastic. It's got like a Minish Cap vibe on some levels. Uh, like these guards remind me of that. Um, Link is not done. <laughs> Link still needs more time in the oven. Uh, as you can clearly see. Yeah, this is not finished. Um, also, now there's grass that's a little bit too high, so it makes seeing slimes, like, really difficult. I do like the overworld sprites, though. I think that they... They look pretty good. Oh, the... Okay. Hang on, I'm just increasing the volume a bit. 
Yeah, so you can see there's a lot of broken sprites. This, so this, this one's just not done. It's not Thanksgiving yet, I know. I don't have any amaretto, so don't worry. We won't be doing a full Zelda 2 run this time. If this was completed, I'd love to see you play through. I would. Also, notice that the, um, the health is closer to original Zelda with hearts instead of a life bar. Some of the backgrounds are actually fucking gorgeous, though. Like, look at that. You think this would work with the randomizer? It should! I don't see why it wouldn't. Well, it doesn't show you the experience needed. Sometimes randomizers mess with sprites. Yeah, no, they can. They can. Um, that's true, yeah, especially for the character. The desert looks awesome. It actually looks like a desert. Love the sandstorm. Okay, can't go in that cave yet. Oh, they're doing daytime here, okay. Menu's different, too, for the spells and everything. Shit. Some of these, I, I think you do have to do a, um, a patch, a file patch, and some of them... I think this is just the result of... Graphisk. Replacement. Oh my god. Uh oh. <laughs> Hello, young fellow. It looks like uh, Super Paper Mario. Well, again, this one is very clearly not finished, so I'm not planning on spending too much time with this one either, but... I really hope this gets finished, at some point. Thankfully, this is still being worked on. That's- that's good news. I- I do think that this Link sprite looks pretty good, and better than the jumping one. I mean, trying to retain the charm of the NES version, while just giving it, like, a boost and, you know, more- like, more shading and everything, I can imagine that being, like, a little bit of a difficult balance. I wouldn't even know how to go about it. But I do think that this is... a pretty damn good job at translating the Link Sprite. It's, like, almost SNES. Like, really close. Go to the temple, at least. Yeah, I'm gonna check that out. These, um, backgrounds, like the, the rock texture, kind of reminds me a little bit of Super Metroid, and that is a very good thing. Well, Super Metroid, it looks like there's also maybe some... Hang on a second. It looks like maybe some of the rock texture is, like, linked to the past. I recognize some of those rocks. Oh, this looks cool. Well, okay. For a second, it almost looked cool. Going to San Diego, I guess. Oh, shit! Some of the temple's done. I love that horse statue with the, the knight from chess. Remember chess? There's gonna be a chess cinematic universe soon.
It even shows you what spell you have selected, which is really nice. That's a good quality of life. Die to see if Ganon got resprited. I can try. Let's, um, I want to level up my sword one time at least. Um, this is the invisible spell. <laughs> now, this spell has not obviously been completed, so Link just remains invisible. No, they don't give XP. They only steal XP. Oh, they got rid of the flashing. That's nice. Man, I really hope this gets finished, because some of these assets look phenomenal. Um, I will just jump into a pit of lava playthrough when it's finished. It could be years, but yeah. Where can I get these? I think... Listen, I'm not going to tell you where you can get them, but I can tell you that it might be really cool to type HD NES games That might be a real cool thing to do. And then Mason, M-E-S-E-N, into your internet. That might be one thing you could do. Oh, fuck. Yeah, Ganon was... That's weird. <laughs> what? Looks like Metroid Zero Mission Ganon. Alright. That's funny. Um, yeah, I, I... Man, I want that to be finished. Being the Zelda 2 fan I am, that was... That was cool. And then we have this. What's wrong, chat? This ain't right? It looks like a Flash game? No, if it looked like a Flash game, there would be blood coming out of the Goombas when you stomp them. But why? Well, it's HD. You can tell. Look at the hill in the background. There's little trees on it. Well, this is the second time I've completed World 1-1 One -One on the stream tonight, considering what happened during Plug and Plague. <laughs> Too much HD, but look at every, you can see every brick, every brick, detailed, on that castle. Show us Bowser? You wanna see one of my famous speedruns? Okay. Now that was called a small boost. Okay, so that that's a uh, and this is a safety strat right here. So yeah, that was a small boost into a safety strat. Oh shit, no, I probably don't want to do that. <laughs> I 
I don't need to go to the negative world this time around. That was a legit strat. No, I know. That's just negative world. You, you just can't do it as Bobby in the other game. We just need to see Bowser. I don't need to see negative world right now. And the texture on those, um... Mushroom platforms? What would you call these, even? Just, what are these things? Just platforms? Trees? Are they trees? Are they plateaus? Semi-solid platform. Oh, yeah. It's okay, it's a strat. That's called the flame boost. And there's Bowser, everybody. Oh. Right here is a beautiful image. Okay, let's do the light gun stuff now. So, one of my first games I ever played was Super Mario Brothers Duck Hunt Combo. And, uh... I'm just gonna say, I think this looks great. This looks official, even. I think it's- it's close to that. I mean, if they were to just throw this on, like, the 3DS or something at the time when they were doing their enhanced ports... ...and gave it, like, a little depth... ...I would've probably been... But it would've been, like, babby easy, because what you do, just click the ducks, like I'm doing now, you just press the screen. This only really works with a light gun. It's because you're fighting against your own aim. But, yeah, I think this looks nice. The sprites look good, the dog looks, um, like a dog. That's fine. <laughs> and, uh, has animation sometimes, even. So, I had this, I had Gotcha, which was, I think, by LJN, and it's like a paintball game. It's not good. Not good. It was not a great game. It was a light gun game. Shit. I had Operation Wolf, which was better, but it was so fucking difficult. Never completed Operation Wolf. And a chunk of that is because the light gun, the zapper, was not the easiest gun in the world to aim. And, um, there were times where I would just go directly up to the screen and shoot. They're actually remaking Operation Wolf. They're doing, like, a sequel or something. It's either a remake or a sequel, and it's 3D, and it looks kind of arcade war. Not advanced wars, and not realistic. Somewhere in between. So, yeah, I had that. I had this. And that, those are my light gun games. But there's another famous light gun game called Hogan's Alley. And here it is. There we go. Who? Oh, this is Hogan's Alley. Isn't one of these children Jason Bateman? Okay, so this is a mix of Hogan's Alley and Hogan's Heroes. <laughs> That's j isn't that Jason Bateman? Hogan family, not Hogan's heroes. Oh, I'm sorry, misspoke. Different Hogan. There's a lot of Hogan's. They could have put Hulk Hogan in here. 
there's Hulk Hogan, there's Hogan's Heroes, there's Hogan's Alley. Uh. Oh, that's Jason Bateman. That was him. Master Bateman. <laughs> yeah, that's what that's yep. That's him. All right. Wow, this is so fun. Okay. Donkey Kong. Okay. All right. So I have mixed feelings about this one. Okay, I mostly don't like this one. <laughs> Just because it's so wildly different in styles. You have Paper Mario going up against... Like, the 64 version of Donkey Kong? But, sprited. Once again, we have hit... Yeah, these can, like, border on Flash territory very, very dangerously. I would like to see more of this stuff get done, because I think that the, the technology is amazing, but we end up with a lot of stuff like this, and there's there's more that ends up looking like this. However, when you see the Castlevania and Ninja Gaiden ones, those ones are real good. All it's missing is Mario with a gun. It's missing voice clips of Mario going, What? 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 Donkey Kong Jr. So this is made by a different person. And this one... is a lot more... faithful to the original, you know, thing. Again, second time- I'm sorry, yeah, Donkey Kong Jr. I, second time we've seen this tonight, too. This was also in, um... that Plug and Plague. This almost looks like something that could have been released in, like, a collection. You know how they did, like, a Game & Watch, like, update? On the, um... Was it GBA or GBC or something? Like, if, if they did, if Nintendo did, like, a remake of a lot of their NES games... It was both? Okay. Well, if Nintendo ended up doing, like, a remake... ...of, like, their top ten arcade-like, uh, games... ...and they got this, like, kind of style upgrade, I'd, I would have bought that. Acknowledged Donkey Kong Jr. pogging? Oh yeah, I guess he kind of does pog a little bit. Great... death face. Very gormless. Someone said not everything is a fucking pog. <laughs> that chat member is so sick of pogs. Like, back in the 90s, he collected dozens of them. And then he just said, I'm out. This was a waste of money, I'm in too deep. I have to return these pogs. And they wouldn't take them back. They wouldn't take them back. And you know what those pogs are worth these days? Nothing. Because they were only ever little cardboard bottle caps. Those Star Wars Episode 1 pogs that I got, and spent so much money getting, and so much time finding, are worth nothing. Bub's Cabulba on a pog is gonna rot in my possession for the rest of my life, and no one will want it, even after I perish, and my bones are long, long rotted. Anyway, it's Donkey Kong Jr. So here's Battle City. Uh, this is another one that came up earlier. Like I said, I had no idea these two segments were so linked. Cremate me with my pogs. That's all I want. So this isn't a huge upgrade, but I like it. It's subtle. The tanks kind of look a little Advance Wars-y, which I like.
And it just ends up just looking cleaner, a little nicer overall. And the tanks go burr. They do. This may not look like much, but back in the day, this was some really entertaining shit. Okay. I mean, there's four tanks left. Should I do it? You know what? I'll complete a run. I'll do it. I just want to show you how much of a gamer I am. Oh, we got like a super tank. Oh, dead. That's good. See you later. Hell yeah. And another Circus Charlie. Not only was this in Plug and Plague tonight, this was in Plug and Plague every other night. I don't know why this game got so popular, aside from the fact that it's lousy with clowns. I didn't have this game as a kid. In fact, I didn't play it until I started streaming many years later, and I thought it was shit. <laughs> I've since changed my opinion on it. Now I think it's fucking shit. <laughs> Listen, I'm a I am only the sum of my influences. Balls incinerated, yeah. Elephant in the back has seen some shit. I know, well, he's- he's watching Circus Charlie, he's watching shit as it unfolds. Now this one looks cool. You'll remember, um, when I was checking out, well, some of you that watch regularly, I was checking out the, um... The games on the Switch for their, like, service, and I checked out the Genesis one of, uh, Mega Man, and it was a little rough. The Deadly Cutsman. Man. Isn't this just Wily Wars? Yeah, but Wily Wars had some problems. This kind of has a nice um, visual identity to it. Again, a nice um, mix of SNES and the NES style. This looks pretty legit to me. Oh god, okay, never mind. The foreground trees. They, they, nope. Bad. That, is Dr. Wily germinating the forest with Miracle Grow? Dr. Wily is using Miracle Grow, Mega Man. You gotta stop him and you gotta take all the energy resources. You must stop Dr. Wily immediately, Mega Man. All right, the trees stopped growing. That's nice. But yeah, this looks good. Aside from the trees, everything else is pretty good. And it's, um... It's just Mega Man 1. Including the NES slowdown. I kind of want to check out another stage real quick. Which one, chat? 
One more stage. Guts. Jelkman. <laughs> Who's that? Anyone else think it's a little weird? He was called Gutsman. Oh, fuck. Gu uh, Gutsman? He's like the strong man. And they just call him Gutsman? No? That's fine. Check the notification? Yeah. It's gone now. They, they hung up. Oh, God. It's only because he climbed the aggro crag. I think Gutsman's the type of dude that would cause permanent spine damage. Oh boy. Oh, oh, oh god. Yeah, not a fan of that level. I'm not a fan. Oh, I've never completed Mega Man 1, by the way. I've completed 4, I've completed... Completed 2. Completed 8, 9, and not 10. Pretty sure I completed 7 and 8. But yeah, there's a lot of Mega Men that I've never completed. I just got frustrated. Two is harder than one? Well, fuck me, then. Man, I really was spoiled by Mega Man music. And, and then thinking, like, future video games would have s soundtracks equally as good. And then not ever did a video game have a better soundtrack than any Mega Man game. Alright, maybe one. One game. Limbo of the Lost, and also Museum of Anything Goes. Two games. Two games. Alright. This game's called Nuts and Milk, which, I gotta be honest, I didn't know this game existed up until today. And... I've been dying to find out what this game is. Because I just don't know. Oh. Oh, it's this. Yeah, I've played this in Plug and Plays. Alright, never mind. Didn't I play this, like, literally today? Oh, right, I was making a comment on the milk counter. So is, like, wait a minute. I thought there was a character named Nuts and a character named Milk. It turns out your name is Nuts, I think, and you collect milk. I don't know, I'm confused now. Shatterhand. When I first patched this, I thought it was Shatterhand. But I think this one got a good reskin. I think whoever did this one really gave a shit about the game. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, fuck yeah. It's this one. I just played this last week when I was checking out the NES games on the, um... 
on the, the virtual- I want to say virtual console, I know it's not. But yeah, this ended up being, like, really good. It might be slightly visually busy, but I might also be really dumb. That said, I think this is maybe one of my favorite ones tonight. fellow with a lightsaber now. This isn't on NSO? Well then how the fuck did I play this? Oh, I played- you know what? No, I didn't play it on NSO. I got confused. I did the NES gem segment last week. A lot of NES games happening lately on the stream, huh? I like how I implanted a false memory into the chat, and they're like, Oh yeah, you played this on the NSO. That was cool when you played it... ...just on this past week, Vinny. That was sick. But no, I, I thought I did. It was actually just last Sunday. So this is the two Sundays in a row that Shatnerhand has gotten some spotlight. I hope it's grateful. But yes, this looks really good, and is very faithful to the original art style. And I think stuff like this is probably my favorite use of the HD packs in Mason. the baseball bat to, <laughs> to keep me away from him. Okay, it's probably like a rifle butt, but I I'm just gonna say he he's got a, like a fucking Louisville slugger. Sorry, Louisville. I wanted to say it right. Sorry for the flashing. It happens. NES is just, like, lousy with flashing. This is Jeff's fault, by the way. The reason I say things are lousy now. He said it first. I had never heard it before. And then I heard some other fucker say it on TV. I think I was watching I Think You Should Leave. And it might have been in there. Like, I've never heard the word used like that in my life. And now, all of a sudden, I'm hearing it, like, twice in the past couple months. Like, where'd this come from? You know, I've heard the word lousy, but in my vocabulary, lousy was just like, oh, this guy's lousy. Like, he's shitty. He's- if you're- if you're a lousy plumber, you're not good at it. But then I hear, like, this- this place is lousy with clowns, apparently means that there are a lot of clowns at this place. The cave was lousy with babies, Jeff. I mean, I'm not gonna disagree with you, it's just weird. Anyway, this is Twinby. And, um... This is one of those ones where you may not initially be like, Oh, this, this doesn't seem like there's a lot being done here. However... However... There's more beneath the hood here than you would expect. And I'll show you. I prepared something. Just so you can see. So that was the, um, patch. This one is... Original Twinbee. So again... It's subtle. It's nothing too drastic. But it, it just makes everything look a little bit nicer. I wonder if this could have just been done with a ROM hack, but... Regardless, these are not ROM hacks, everybody. These are... Original NES games with basically graphics plastered on top of them. So you can rip 
your games from your NES that you own legally in a cartridge ripper, with which they sell at every local bodega, deli, CVS, Walmart, Staples, and Dick's, and BJ's too, Dick's and BJ's. And you can use that le device um, legally to rip your game cartridges that you own and use them on your PC with a legal and cool emulator that you can then apply a patch to. That said, this is a ROM hack. This is Dr. Garfield, and it's a ROM hack of Virus, which was the original uh, Dr. Mario game. It was the beta that was released. So, there's the- okay, there's one thing, yes, Lumpy did a video about this. I, in fact, I messaged Lumpy, I'm like, hey, how'd you get that- how'd you get that audio? He was like, yeah, that's just me. I just added that later. <laughs> Shoutouts to Lumpy, he's great. But, um... This- this is a different thing because, um... Oh, there's Lumpy. Hey, Lumpy. I think there was some stuff. There's like some scummy middies in the file. Like, here, I want to play a scummy MIDI for you real quick, because, um, it's, it's really good. It's actually not too scummy. Then, then there's this. It gets a little scummy here and there. It's I'm sorry it's so low. But regardless, I couldn't get the audio to work if there's even a way to do so. Um, so I'm just gonna show you Dr. Garfield. Didn't even know Garfield was a doctor. How about that? That crazy cat has so many different careers. Oh. Also, a proctologist, too, in his spare time. In his own words, it's just like handling some lasagna. By the way, this has the um, HD pack applied. I think just to add graphics. I'm not really 100% sure what it's adding, but Lumpy, didn't you design some visuals for this? Like, how, how'd that work? What did, you, what did you end up doing for this? Turn up the graphics. I think it's adding the vet Liz on the left. Oh. Oh fuck, oops. Are you playing fetish games again, Vin? No, just because L Liz from Garfield was added via an HD patch. What's wrong with that? I mean... It's- it's fine. It's- I think it's fine. Oh, I think that's also added. Let me see... I think Lumpy did the virus graphic? Pause. Chat, what if you lived in Jim Davis's old house? And there was just a bunch of, like, Garfield stuff. There's like an OD chair, a Garfield chair. Did you watch I Think You Should Leave? Yes, I did. And then you find out it's actually not Jim Davis's house, but it's actually Jim Davis's killer's house. Who just ends up being Jim Davis anyway. Hang on, let me see. Okay. 
But yeah, it is not actually Dr. Mario. Again, this is... Edited, not edited really, but like, um... I don't want to say the word again, because, you know, I don't want to jinx it. But it is... Uh... The altered code from Virus, which was the original Dr. Mario beta. So someone had the bright idea of, of altering that. And that's how we got this. So that's- I find that kind of be- uh, kind of strange. It is kind of strange. That someone would do that and not go for the original Dr. Mario. But maybe there was something in the code that was just more appealing? I don't know. Apparently Jim Davis and his crew love all the weird shit the internet has done to Garfield. They snuck a crude webcomic edit in one of the animated movies. Well... That's nice to hear. I like when a creator has a sense of humor about the things they do. Chat. Contra. This is only one stage. It's only one stage, it's a demo. But, you have to see this. The faces are amazing. Someone just said Jim Davis has a sense of humor. Yeah, you wouldn't know by reading Garfield, but I think he does. I'm sorry, Jim Davis. <laughs> I didn't mean to say- I didn't mean to- I did. Anyway, this looks awesome. I wonder if some of these graphics are from the DS version of Contra. Looks like Contra 4. I- I don't know, it might be some Contra 4 and then some additional sprite edits. I'm not entirely sure, but it, it might be a bit too crisply for some. I think it looks pretty good. I do think Contra 4 looks better from what I remember of it. Yeah, it's a little crisply, but I do appreciate the effort here. I'm telling you, Contra's gonna get a movie. Now that video game movies are the new shit. Comic book movies are, like, kinda out of fashion. Or going to, you know, be replaced with, um... Video game cinematic universes. It's gonna be Contra. Nuts and Milk is gonna get a movie. Oh wait, it has. It's... It in fact, if I'm not mistaken, Nuts and Milk is usually the determination of which technology is chosen. Like, you know, VHS versus Betamax, DVD versus, uh, whatever else, or Blu-ray versus HD DVD. Vinny, what the fuck are you saying? Yeah, Ice Climber's gonna get a movie. It's just gonna star, uh, star Sylvester Stallone. Starl. I think he was already in a movie where he was climbing stuff. What was that movie? Cliffhanger. You know what the real injustice of this world is? Is that Cliffhanger didn't end on a cliffhanger. Okay, well, it was only that one level. So yeah, that was pretty good. Ninja Gaiden. Vinny ignoring Joel. I- Chat, I can't see everything. The chat is scrolling up so fast. This is why Joel hides, like, from- from chat members sometimes. Cause he just wants to be a regular-ass dude in chat, and just like, once in a while, ask a question and get ignored like a regular-ass human being. And then chat's like, no put the Joel! Like, dog, Joel could just message me later. We catch up frequently. Mm. 
Boot the chop! What was the question, Joel? <laughs> Have I seen the Tetris movie? No, I haven't. <laughs> I haven't seen it. Um, is it the one... It's a TV show about the dude who makes Tetris? Or is it a movie, or...? No, I haven't watched that yet. Taron Edgerton. Oh, Elton John. Actual movie? Isn't that just Pixels with Adam Sandler? So this is another one that you might not see the differences unless I show you the original. I'm going to do that real quick. We're almost done with this segment because I think I found just about every single one of these that currently exists. But yeah, you can see it's definitely an improvement. It's much more restrained and a little bit more subtle than the previous one um, that we saw, Contra, which was just balls to the wall. And then, um... Ninja Gaiden 2 as well, or Gaiden, I'm not really sure how you say it. I, I've never been sure, because I've heard both ways. But yeah, just using this like that looks phenomenal to me. Just to get some more shading, some more colors on the screen at the same time, because the NES couldn't handle very many. Um... Someone said, it really is amazing how so many people are just doing this stuff completely for free. I mean, that's why I think when people, when companies charge a fuckload for low effort remakes, and I'm not talking about NES games necessarily, but yeah, like, people usually make some amazing stuff. The ROM hacking scene for... NES, Super Nintendo, Genesis, all the way up to, like, N64, and, you know, even a little bit further than that, is still really thriving. Don't let me say that too loud, because Nintendo's on the warpath again lately, but... And it's just people who love these games. That's what I really wish companies like Nintendo would see, is, like... You gotta do a really good job. Because, yeah, I mean, I know people are gonna buy it anyway, myself included, because I'm a fucking slob. But I do know that you have fans making even, like, superior shit, like texture packs. You know, improving, like, mechanics that were antiquated. And, yeah, they're doing it for free. Just because they love the game and they want to share that experience with other people. So... You know, all I'm saying is this could have been $70, and, you know, Nintendo would charge the $70 for it. Like, look at those arms. Look at, look at that crouch pose. Look at the power. The stance. That is- that may not look like it, but that is the peak form of video game characters. Especially that right there. Okay, then there's also this one, Paper Mario Bros. Which, to be fair, I don't know if I patched this wrong, because there's just always a dead Mario in the background. So there's a very decent chance I patched this incorrectly. Or it's just broken. But... I cannot- <laughs> I cannot get rid of that Mario, he's just dead. Nope, it's supposed to be there, it's intended. Oh. 
Again, this is just sprite replacement. It represents the state of Paper Mario series. <laughs> hey, Origami King was good. I, I liked it. Better than I thought it would be. Okay. And what else do we have here? I've got... Castlevania? Oh. oh shit. Is this the Famicom version of the music or is this a remix? No, this isn't Famicom. This has got to be something else. This is a remix. It's pretty loud. Okay, so music-wise... You know, you could always re revert the music back to the original. But, I'll say that I think the visuals here are... ...really good. This is just bordering on too busy. But, like, just barely, but I think it looks... I'm- I, that's like a nitpick. I think this is a, a really good version of... ...of Castlevania. Because they already remade Castlevania. I forget what it was called. It was some bizarre, like Simon Belmont looked like a fucking like musclecock man. What was that one? Chronicles. Or uh, was it Haunted Castle? One of them, Simon looked real weird. But, yeah, I think this looks mostly, mostly really good. I think there's also a sprite replacement for Simon, where you could get him looking even more like a big, thick-thighed barbarian man. But I'm not sure how to get that going. Or maybe that wasn't released, or maybe it was a separate file, but whatever it was, I saw it, I was like, that looks weird. It was like hyper-realistic Simon thighs. And then everything else was pixel. I'd very much like to get rid of the stopwatch now. Yeah, oh well. Sun. Oh, I got the axe, okay. I just wanted to hear the music, fight the boss, and see the next level real quick. Am I gonna die to the bat? Vin, you had a perfect damage boost up to the door. Did I accidentally do another speedrunner's trick? Detailed. Kind of like the soundtrack. I mean, it's a very specific style. You have to be into this. Well, otherwise, you like pixel music, and I like pixel music. I, I don't know. Pretty decent remixes, though, for sure. Yes, pixel music. I know what I said.
Got one more for you. I wanted to end this segment with maybe, aside from Metroid, the other best one. Also, again, music is optional. You could easily replace it, bring back the original, or add your own. Actual SNES samples. This is SNES BS Zelda music. Not bullshit, this is real. <laughs> it's dangerous to go alone. Take this. Not sure how I feel about the sword beam sound. Though I do like the noise it makes when you stab them. Yeah, I'm a bit iffy on some of the sounds, but otherwise I think it looks incredible. I mean, it's got like a... A tune link thing going on here, but also the hair isn't quite as Wind Waker Link. It's like a, a mix between Tune Link and Classic Link. The sprite is from Cadence of Hyrule. Oh shit, really? Are the visual like the sprites from um, the environments also? Because I'm recognizing Link to the Past tiles as well. Just Link so far. Some are. Yeah, maybe like the cliffs or something. That looks like something from Cadence. This down here. I mean, smart. Use the resources if they look good and they all like kind of mesh together for a cohesive thing. But like I said at the very beginning of this segment, mileage may vary, person to person. I'm into some of this, but not all of it. I just think it's really cool that people would spend a lot of time doing this just so we get to play it. I'm really... I'm really happy that people do that still with some of these games. What dungeon music? Yeah, that's my next one. I want to check out a dungeon. Now, which version of the Hyrule theme is this? Have you seen Ship of Harkonnen? Yep. Zelda 2 PC Enhanced has a randomizer now. No shit! Four Swords Adventures? Okay. Skeletons. They're not just regular skeleton dudes anymore. They have knives. Well, I guess they always did. They have hats now. BS Zelda Dungeon. They changed the music to be Halloween Core.
keys. So, yeah, obviously I'm not going to be able to get too far, but I just wanted you to get the gist of it. I think this one... This one's pretty damn good. But, again, there, there's stuff that I know is a little bit too different. But there have been so many different versions of Zelda 1. I mean, if you want to talk about ROM hacks and not HD texture replacements, there are a lot that just change the visuals to something a little bit more... I guess... M not modern, but... Detailed? Can we see the dragon boss? Yeah, I guess we're that close to it, right? Can we see Ganon? Alright, give me about six hours, five hours. I'm not a speedrunner. Could take a while. Oh boy, these, these lads. Wow. That is a quite a different look. To say the least. Oh, the Wind Waker Wallmasters. Or uh, Minish Cap, yeah. Could you always shoot swords at the dragon? Yeah? Huh. False memories, I guess. So, chat, that is the segment. I think it's awesome. My favorites are Metroid, Zeld, Castlevania looks good. Um, Hogan's Alley, okay, no. Duck Hunt, for sure. And... Zelda 2 has a lot of potential. Shatterhand was fantastic as well, yeah. However, I do have a bit of a bonus. This is not part of the HD texture pack. However, I didn't want to spend too much time on this. So, someone decided to remake Zelda's Adventure. Yes, the CDI game. <laughs> For the Game Boy. And I believe this actually works with a real Game Boy Color. Okay, so for those that don't know, there were the two games on the CDI where you played as, um, one you played as Link, one you played as Zelda. And then there was this game, which was just, like, awful. Another top-down game, but not a good one. And you play as Zelda, and you go around, and you find... Uh... And you find stuff. Apparently, this was created even to have some of the fucking bad controls in mind. When people told me this existed, I was just like, I, I don't think I want to play too much of this. So I figured I would just play it here for a little bit. Yeah, like, what what's going on here? Moblin Inn. Are we friends? Wait, that worked? Yeah, you actually have to press the button to pick things up. Is that a bong? Empty bottle treasure. If you don't know what Zelda's Adventure looks like, I definitely would recommend looking it up on YouTube. Just type CDI Zelda's Adventure, just so you can see how different this actually is. Otherwise, you might be inclined to think it's a good game. 
And I cannot allow that. I, ne I need people to be aware. But this, in fact, is made to make it both better and to be a little bit more accurate to it than maybe one would like. I've just stolen one of your lives. Oh, that's, that's great. Thank you. Someone in chat just said, looks fine to me. I also would recommend you check this out, then. I mean, it's not the worst thing ever. It's not Zelda's adventure on the CDI. I mean, it is, but it's not, so that's fine. But... Hot take here. Zelda CDI games are good. Players are just turned off by the bad voice acting and bad cutscenes and bad controls. Huh. <laughs> Chad, I don't think they were being serious. Someone was like, I hate gamers. I don't think that was a serious fucking comment. All right, I, I don't really want to play more of this, but just so you know what this game even looks like, CDI Zelda's Adventure. Um. Yeah, so again, I just needed some place to put this game because I definitely didn't want to spend more than five minutes on it, and... You know, it exists. It's cool that it does. I think it's like... It's, it's nice. When they remade... When that person remade the CDI Zelda games and made them more playable. The side-scrolling one, ones. Yeah, they weren't as bad. They weren't great. But playable. They, well, they were kind of playable. For now. The rest is up to you to discover. Yeah. Inter yeah, so this is this is what the game looks like. Zelda, Zelda, do not roam unprotected. Look nearby for something to aid you. One, two, three, four. Nearly four, maybe just over seconds to go from one screen to the next. God, what a mistake the CDI was. Nintendo was like, what could go wrong if we just license our games? Here, take Zelda and Mario. Have fun. How hard could it be? We wouldn't get the legendary YouTube poop without the CDI. A traveler of kind intentions has found me at last. At least there's that. Alright. Well, that's done. Um, we're going to take a minute here. Because I'm done with the Super Nin uh, sorry, the Nintendo stuff. And uh, my brain is a little scrambled. So we're going to take just a second. <laughs> 